All right, I'll hide this. Uh, let's do one more. This is the flow trajectory. Flow trajectory is probably people's favorite one. And the quickest way I usually do it is to just hit this flow simulation analysis tab over here on the left side, and it immediately splits your command manager between the flow tab and this property manager. And then you can go grab your static pressure opening or your heat generation rate or whatever it is you want. That's going to define how to create your flow trajectory. Now, the way a flow trajectory works is you pick points, any points you want, uh, and if you pick a surface, points are distributed evenly on that. This one is defaulted to 20 points, distributed evenly on all those faces. And then it just sort of puts a GPS tracker on a particle of air or fluid and just sees where it goes. So it's like a neutrally buoyant, uh, like a GPS balloon flowing through there. And a lot of times this is what people get and they're really not very satisfied with it. Let me show you. Uh, first thing I'll do is just increase the size of the arrows a little bit. And so it's we're seeing some data. Actually, we're seeing some data outside the, the box, some data inside the box. Uh, let's do instead of flat arrows, let's do just regular arrows. Those look a little bit easier to see for this. And a common problem I hear is, hey, I got arrows where I don't want them. I got no arrows where I do want them. I've got an incomplete picture. And the solution seems like you should just be able to increase the number of points, right? 100, 1,000, whatever. Uh, and that it carries its own problems because once you increase the number of points, it creates a longer solve or a longer time to create the plot. And then you start to also get areas like this where you see them really stacked on top of each other. That stacking usually has to do with a vortex, right? I'll show you how to deal with the vortex in a second, but first, let's change how we define this. Instead of using the lid, the boundary, let's see if we can get something that's really well distributed, and for that, I'm just gonna click the front plane. And what that's gonna do is say, grab locally grab points all over the front plane, and just pick 20 points, and then find out not only where it's going, but where it's been, uh, you know, where did it come from to get there? Because if you have a point in space, you have a forward and a backward trajectory that you need to track. And so again, I see a little bit better distribution. I get this guy here, which is this vortex. If you were to animate this, you would just see it spinning around and round and round. The way I typically deal with that is to go into the constraints. And instead of it saying four meters and 3,600 seconds, let's do like 10 seconds each way. And now what you're seeing is yeah, there's, there's a vortex there, but I'm not wasting, you know, an absolute just massive amount of resources trying to resolve that, right? I still get a really good understanding of what's going on elsewhere, uh, but it looks like five seconds probably wasn't enough because it doesn't even reach the boundary. So if you're changing this, just make sure it's a value that allows you to get from start to finish, you know, inlet to outlet for each of those points. All right, so let's make this 100. Let's see what that does um, with these constraints applied. And maybe instead of time, we should make it length, right? So instead of time, let's do like um, one meter, maybe half a meter. And that's going to allow us to really understand what's going on without losing so much here. All right, I'm gonna click OK, and I'm gonna animate this just to see kind of if I can gain some more insight. Uh, again, it's not necessarily, oh, and I, didn't, I wasn't even showing pressure or temperature, I was showing pressure. So you're not necessarily going to see everything in each plot. Some of these plots aren't going to help you, but the more you sit there and explore it, the more you pick and choose different starting points for the air, the better you're gonna have an understanding. So if you see an empty spot, like right here, this is a big old empty spot. That empty spot may mean that there's just not a lot going on there. That airflow is stagnant, right? You have a very boring area because it's just not participating in the bulk of the flow of air. Uh, let's go ahead and stop this. And I just wanna make one more edit to it before we finish, and that is, we put it in the front plane. We probably need to pull it out here 
where it's a little more interesting kind of in the main area. Let's check and see what that looks like. And you see a wildly different result for each set of inputs. That's to be expected, honestly. Um, and if you wanted to really zoom in on one specific area, actually, let me hide this and I'll do it on a separate one. Let's do a flow trajectory specifically around the transformer. And let's do 50 on that one and we'll do, um, we'll do spheres just for fun, make it a little bigger. Click OK. I want to see the air that specifically touches the transformer. Right? I, not necessarily all airflow, but airflow that's pertinent and relevant to the cooling of our hottest thing. Because if I was to, let's say, add a fan or modify some geometry, uh, I'd want to know what the most important area is to modify or add. Alright, so this, this is interesting. It's showing me some good information. Uh, that took a little longer than I would have liked to kind of generate. So that's where you want to go back to the original, uh, the first webinar where we talked about simplifying the geometry. I kind of took some shortcuts and I'm a little bit paying for it now because of uh, how it's going to have to do Boolean operations to do these results. Just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, but it looks like we've got those recirculations right down here, uh, right on that area of interest or the in inlet area. That's not a big surprise. Uh, we're seeing the air from both sides is participating quite a bit in cooling that. And then it's just kind of going up. And if we look at, from the side, you can see it's almost coming from the back and from the front and then circulating back down around. So some pretty interesting stuff. All right. So at this point, we have gotten a pretty good understanding of what's going on just kind of as a, as a general idea.